So in today's video, we're going to be looking at a plant that I thought I did a video on a while back, but apparently I looked through and I did not, and that is actually Amazon Swords, but we're also going to include Rosette Swords, and we're going to be taking a look at the differences between them and also how they're very similar, so stay tuned to check that out. But what's going on guys, Justin from Show Up Plants here. So today we're talking about Amazon Swords and I'm kind of excited to do this video just because it's like a really easy plant that most beginners kind of gravitate to and I'm surprised that I haven't done a video on it. I could have sworn that I did, maybe I did and I just never uploaded it, I don't know. But let's showcase what Amazon Sword is and what it does and what it looks like. So this is Amazon Sword here and you'll notice it's a very, just green leaves, um, you know, pretty plain, They nothing, out of the ordinary but you know it is a very beginner friendly easy plant to grow now Amazon swords can get rather large they can grow I mean we just actually got mother plants in for a special order and they were about 24 inches tall so they were massive sword plants and those obviously are grown above the water they will adjust they'll shrink a little bit but you can expect these guys over the course of a couple of years to get to somewhere around a foot and a half two feet tall and that's why like in smaller aquariums, they may not be ideal if it's a long-term plant or if you don't have larger aquariums to eventually move them into just because they will get massive, but it does take them a while to get to that. So the reason why I wanted to showcase the Amazon sword with the rosette sword is because they're very similar looking. This plant now, keep in mind, right now it has this like dying leaf here and that's just because it's transitioning from underwater or from above water growth to underwater growth and I'm just gonna rip that guy off there because it's not doing the plant any good but if you look in here in the middle there's little tiny leaves coming up these are actually about the size of what it's gonna look like now it's a very small sword they don't grow super large you can expect this guy to be no longer or no bigger than I would say eight inches or so at the very height of its um, you know growth like at, at its very maturity so you can see the clear difference here is that Amazon sword is a lot larger than rosette sword what's also a bit different than the Amazon sword to the rosette sword is the rosette sword actually has some texture to its leaves but it does remain green and that's you know kind of why they're similar because they just they're just green through and through no matter how much light you throw at it they're not gonna change colors uh, Rosette Sword also gets its name because if you look at the tippy top of the plant here, I'm going to try and get a close up of it. There is a little tiny point right, let's see, right there. The little tiny point. So it almost kind of looks like uh, like little tiny um, thorns or not. They're not, it's not spiky. You could touch them. They're not going to hurt you. But yeah, they kind of have a cool distinguished look to them. So. They are very similar swords though, like I said. Really, I mean, honestly, without knowing the difference and without having them side by side, you would almost assume that this is an Amazon sword and uh, nobody would be the wiser. But uh, if you have smaller aquariums, Rosette sword, larger aquariums, Amazon sword, or if you have a mix, you know, if you have like an in-between tank somewhere like maybe a 20 or 30 gallon, I would go with both. Of course, you could stick Amazon sword in a smaller aquarium. If you're okay with that, it's just gonna get big over time, so be prepared. So let's talk about trimming real quick, because trimming is uh, a usual question when it comes to swords. I always get, uh, hey, am I doing this right? So what you want to do is you want to find where the leaf goes all the way down to the base of the plant, and you actually want to trim it down close to there. And you only want to do this with outer leaves or damaged leaves like this that are yellowing or are possibly uh, disintegrating. Um, these aren't going to do anything good for the plant, so you might as well just remove them and remove them as close to the, the root mass as possible because any kind of excess growth is just no good that that you leave on there so try and trim them as low as possible don't ever trim the leaves across like this because that actually just damages the leaf eventually it will start to deteriorate and die on you so that's not ideal as far as trimming that's pretty much it with both plants so just trim the leaves all the way down by the base and when it comes to trimming only trim off the leaves that may be damaged or not going to be helping the plant at all so these older leaves that were growing above the water i would trim off but any of the newer, smaller growth leave, and you never want to trim unless there's at least two to three leaves coming up or new leaves. Because if you trim off all the leaves, even if they're not doing well, it's just going to kind of kill the plant most likely. So only trim when there's existing leaves coming up or already up. And when it comes to planting these guys, you could just take them out of the pot, plug them down in there now. Sometimes they come with multiples in there, so just break them out and plant them, you know, a couple inches from each other. You don't want to plant them right on top of each other. You want to give them space to grow. Same thing with Amazon Swords. There may be a couple in here, but only um, plant one in one space and spread them out. 
Now, when it comes to planting these guys, uh, they do like good substrate. They're heavy root feeders. You can see there's roots coming out of the bottom here on both of these guys. Do you want to have good substrate? If you don't have good substrate and you only have sand or gravel, you can substitute that with some root tabs. We sell root tabs on our website and these plants. If you want to check out our website, H2O Plants, it helps support the videos that we do and these videos especially. So if you want to check out and get yourself some sword plants, make sure you do that. Other than the root tabs, the trimming, low light, both of these guys, low to medium light is fine. I mean, a highlight, they'll just grow better, don't need CO2 can tolerate a large variety of parameters such as pH, you know, anywhere between 6 to 8 is fine. All those, you know, KH, GH, doesn't really matter with these guys, they're pretty hardy plants. And also Amazon swords in particular are really good with abusive fish. Now I wouldn't say, I mean, rosette sword could probably handle it, but the leaves are a bit smaller. So if you have some fish like cichlids or goldfish that may be picking at the plants, I wouldn't go with the rosette sword, but the Amazon swords definitely. They're bigger leaves, they're hardier, they're much harder to tear. It's going to be, um, you know, you're going to have to have massive fish for them to be able to eat these leaves. So Amazon swords, pretty hardy plant when it comes to, you know, those fish that like to pick up plants and move them around and stuff. When it comes to propagating these guys, they're pretty easy. So the easy way is you wait till they start to send out this long stalk. It almost looks like a stem and uh, usually it'll flower either above the water or sometimes underwater it will flower, but usually underwater it'll produce baby plants all along that. It's called a stave. Most sword plants, this is the way they reproduce. I would just leave the stave on, let it grow until it stops. Usually it won't stop growing for quite some time and you'll probably get uh, anywhere between three and 10 plants off of it. Um, the larger Amazon sword plants that we just sent out today for a special order, they had probably about 10 of the baby plants on the stave because they were mother plants. So that's just kind of what they do. They produce baby plants like crazy. But don't worry if your plant does not reproduce um, quickly. It does take some time. These things need to establish. It could take several months before they reach that flowering state. But once they do, you can expect several more plants to pop up. And what you do is once it's done kind of doing its thing for a couple weeks, once you notice no more growth, you could chop off the stave uh, as close as to the bottom of the plant as possible and then you could just clip off where the sword plants are and just replant them and they'll just grow and you'll get even more of them. It's the same thing with the rosette sword although I've never personally seen the rosette sword go to flower it just could take a really long time and I don't think I've actually had one long enough to see it happen but I do know that that's pretty much hands down all the swords do it that way. The other way of propagating these guys and not a way that I recommend but you can take out the plant, you know, rip it out of the substrate, and then you could use a razor blade to cut it directly down the middle, like vertically, and that way you're cutting it into two sections, and then you can replant, and sometimes that'll produce new plants. I've never tried it, uh, I don't think it's worth it, I just wait for them to produce their baby plants through their flowers and in our state, then that's pretty much what I do. So that's really it on these guys, they're very simple, easy to grow plants, like I said, if you have a large aquarium, Amazon sword, if you have a small aquarium, rosette sword, but with that said, guys, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of either one of these, if you have any, if you're thinking about picking them up. Also, if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new here and you don't want to miss out on any future videos having to do with plants, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to check out some of our most recent videos, you can click either one of those, and I will see you next time.